A Story of Karma by Kushwan Singh Sir Mohanlal looked at himself in the mirror of a first-class waiting room at a railway station. The mirror was obviously made in India. The red oxide at its back had come off at several places and long lines of translucent glass cut across its surface. Sir Mohan smiled at the mirror with an air of pity and patronage. You are very much like everything else in this country, inefficient, dirty, indifferent, he murmured. The mirror smiled back at Sir Mohan. You are a bit of all right, old chap, it said. Distinguished, efficient, even handsome. That neatly trimmed moustache, that suit from Saville Row with the carnation of the buttonhole, the aroma of eau de cologne, talcum powder, and scented soap all about you. Yes, old fellow, you are a bit of all right. Sir Mohan threw out his chest, smoothed his balliol tie for the umpteenth time and waved a goodbye to the mirror. He glanced at his watch. There was still time for a quick one. Kohai, a bearer in white livery, appeared through a wire gauze door. Ekshota ordered Sir Mohan and sank into a large cane chair to drink and ruminate. Outside the waiting room, Sir Mohan's Lal's luggage lay piled along the wall. On a small grey steel trunk, Lakni, Lady Mohan Lal sat chewing a betel leaf and fanning herself with a newspaper. She was short and fat and in her middle age. <laughs> she wore a dirty white sari with a red border. On one side of her nose glistened a diamond nose ring and she had several gold bangles on her arms. She had been talking to the bear until Sir Mohan had summoned him inside. As soon as he had gone, she hailed a passing railway coolie. Where does the Zenona stop? he asked. Right at the end of the platform. The bearer answered. Lady Lal picked up her brass stiffen carrier and ambled along behind him. On the way, she stopped by a hawker stall to replenish her silver betel leaf case and then joined the coolie. She sat down on her steel trunk, which the coolie had put down, and started talking to him. Are you traveling alone, sister? Lakmi chatted away merrily. She was fond of a little gossip and had no one to talk to at home. Her husband never had any time to spare for her. She lived in an upper story of the house and he on the ground floor. He did not like her poor illiterate relatives hanging around his bungalow, so they never came. He came up to her once in a while at night and stayed for a few minutes. He just ordered her with an anglicized Hindustani and she obeyed passively. These nocturnal visits had, however, borne no fruit. Sir Mohan wondered if he would be traveling alone. It was cantonment and some English officers might be on the train. His heart warmed at the prospect of an impressive conversation. He never showed any sign of eagerness to talk to an English as most Indian did. Nor was he loud, aggressive, and opinionated like them. He went about his business with an expressionless matter-of-factness. He would retire off his corner by the window and get out a copy of the Times. He would fold it in a way in which the name of the paper was visible to others while he did the crossword puzzle. The Times always attracted attention. Someone would like to borrow it when he had put it aside with a gesture signifying 
I finished with it. Perhaps someone would recognize his balial tie which he always wore while traveling. That would be open a vista leading to a fairyland of Oxford colleges, masters, dons, tutors, boat races, and rugger matches. If both the times and the tie failed, Sir Mohan would coy high his bearer to get a scotch out. Whiskey never failed with Englishmen, then followed Sir Mohan's handsome gold cigarette case filled with English cigarettes. English cigarettes in India? How on earth did he get them? Sure he didn't mind? And Sir Mohan's understanding smell? Of course he didn't. Sir Mohan looked out of the window down the crowded platform. His face lit up as he saw two English soldiers trudging along, looking in all the compartments for room. They had their haversacks slung behind their backs and walked unsteadily. Sir Mohan decided to welcome them, even though they were entitled to travel only second class. He would speak to the guard. One of the soldiers came up to the last compartment and stuck his face through the window. He surveyed the compartment and noticed the unoccupied berth. Here, Bill, he shouted. One here. His companion came up, also looked in, and looked at Sir Mohan. Get the nigga out, a soldier said. I say, I say, surely, protested Sir Mohan in his Oxford accent. The soldier paused. It almost sounded like English, but they knew better than to trust their inbrated ears. The engine whistled and the guard waved his green flag. Keep your ruddy mouth shut. Sir Mohan's feet were glued to the earth and he lost his speech. He stared at the lighted windows of the train going past him in quickening tempo. The tail of the train appeared with a red light and the guards standing in the open doorway with the flags in their hands. Meanwhile, in the interclass Zenana compartment was Lakme, fair and fat, on whose nose the diamond nose ring glistened against the station lights. Her mouth was bloated with petal saliva which she had been storing up to speed as soon as the train had cleared the station. As the train sped past the lighted part of the platform, Lady Lal spat and sent a jet of red dribble flying across like a dart. And that is the story of Karma by Kushwan Singh.